Apothecary, Wikipedia article audio. Apothecary slash p theta k r i slash is one term for a medical professional who formulates and dispenses materia medica to physicians, surgeons, and patients. The modern pharmacist has taken over this role. In some languages and regions, the word apothecary is still used to refer to a retail pharmacy or a pharmacist who owns one. Apothecary's investigation of herbal and chemical ingredients was a precursor to the modern sciences of chemistry and pharmacology. In addition to dispensing herbs and medicine, the apothecary offered general medical advice and a range of services that are now performed by other specialist practitioners, such as surgeons and obstetricians. Apothecary shops sold ingredients and the medicines they prepared wholesale to other medical practitioners, as well as dispensing them to patients. In 1600s England, they also controlled the trade of tobacco which was imported as a medicine. Etymology History Apothecary derives from the ancient Greek word pi omicron theta kappa eta via Latin apotheca, medieval Latin apothecarius, and eventually old French apothecare. In some languages the word apothecary is still used to designate a pharmacist slash chemist, such as German and Dutch and Luxembourgish. Likewise, Pharmacy translates as apotek and apteki in the Scandinavian, Finnish, and some Slavic languages such as Bosnian apoteka, Serbian, Russian and Ukrainian. In Yiddish the word is, pronounced aptiak. Use of the term apothecary in the names of businesses varies with time and location. In some areas of the United States it has experienced a nostalgic revival and been used for a wide variety of businesses, while in other areas such as California its use is restricted to licensed pharmacies. Apothecary, as a profession, could date back to 2600 BC to ancient Babylon, which provides one of the earliest records of the practice of the apothecary. Clay tablets were found with medical texts recording symptoms, the prescriptions, and the directions for compounding it. The papyrus Ebers from ancient Egypt, written around 1500 BC, contain a collection of more than 800 prescriptions, or ancient recipes for the apothecaries of the time. It mentions over 700 different drugs. Around 2000 to 2500 BC, Emperor Shen Nung is credited creation of the Shen Nung Pen Tsao Ching. Considered a foundational material for Chinese medicine and herbalism, it became an important source for Chinese apothecaries. The book, which documented 365 treatments, had a focus on roots and grass. It had treatments which came from minerals, roots, and grass, and animals. Many of the mentioned drugs and their uses are still followed today. Ginseng's use as a sexual stimulant and aid for erectile dysfunction stems from this book. Ma Huang, an herb first mentioned in the book, led to the introduction of the drug ephedrine into modern medicine. Apothecary work as gateway to females as healers. According to Sharif Kaf Al Ghazal, an S. Hadzovic, apothecary shops existed during the Middle Ages in Baghdad, operated by Islamic pharmacists in 754 during the Abbasid Caliphate, or Islamic Golden Age. Apothecaries were also active in Islamic Spain by the 11th century. By the end of the 14th century, Geoffrey Chaucer was mentioning an English apothecary in the Canterbury Tales, specifically the nun's priest's tale as Pertilote speaks to Chanteclier. Methods And for Yeshul Nat to re. Though in this tune is noon apothecary, I shall myself to herbs teshen yo, 
that shul bin for your heel and for your prow. In modern English, this can be translated as Recipes And you should not linger, though in this town there is no apothecary, I shall teach you about herbs myself, that will be for your health and for your pride. Other mentions in creative literature In Renaissance Italy, Italian nuns became a prominent source for medicinal needs. At first they used their knowledge in non-curative uses in the convents to solidify the sanctity of religion among their sisters. As they progressed in skill they started to expand their field to create profit. This profit they used towards their charitable goals. Because of their eventual spread to urban society, these religious women gained roles of public significance beyond the spiritual realm. Later apothecaries led by nuns were spread across the Italian peninsula. Noted Apothecaries The Walters Art Museum However, there were ongoing tensions between apothecaries and other medical professions, as is illustrated by the experiences of Susan Reeve Lyon and other women apothecaries in 17th century London. Often women became apothecaries which took away business from male physicians. In 1865 Elizabeth Garrett Anderson became the first woman to be licensed to practice medicine in Britain by passing the examination of the Society of Apothecaries. By the end of the 19th century, the medical professions had taken on their current institutional form with defined roles for physicians and surgeons, and the role of the apothecary was more narrowly conceived, as that of pharmacist. In German-speaking countries, such as Germany, Austria, and Switzerland, pharmacies or chemist stores are still called apothecaries or in German apothecan. The apothec is legally obligated to be run at all times by at least one apotheker or apothecarin, who actually has an academic degree as a pharmacist in German Pharmaseut or Pharmaseutin and has obtained the professional title apotheker by either working in the field for numerous years usually working in a pharmacy store or taking additional exams. Thus a Pharmaseut is not always an apotheker. Magdalena Neff became the first woman to gain a medical qualification in Germany when she studied pharmacy at the Technical University of Karlsruhe and later passed the apothecary's examination in 1906. Apothecaries used their own measurement system, the apothecary's system, to provide precise weighing of small quantities. Apothecaries dispensed vials or poisons as well as medicines and as is still the case, medicines could be either beneficial or harmful if inappropriately used. Protective methods to prevent accidental ingestion of poisons included the use of specially shaped containers for potentially poisonous substances such as laudanum. Throughout medieval times, apothecaries were not trained in universities as physicians were. More often, they were trained through guilds, an apprenticeship. Therefore, their business was typically family-run, and wives or other women of the family also worked alongside their husbands in the shops, learning the trade themselves. Women were still not allowed to train and be educated in universities so this allowed them a chance to be trained in medical knowledge and healing. Previously, women had had some influence in other women's health care such as serving as midwives and other feminine care in a setting that was not considered appropriate for males. Though physicians gave medical advice, they did not make medicine, so they typically sent their patients to particular independent apothecaries, who did also provide some medical advice in particular remedies and healing. Many recipes included herbs, minerals, and pieces of animals that were ingested, made into paste for external use, or used as aromatherapy. 
Some of these are similar to natural remedies used today, including catnip, chamomile, fennel, mint, garlic, and witch hazel. Many other ingredients used in the past such as urine, fecal matter, earwax, human fat, and saliva, are no longer used and are generally considered ineffective or unsanitary. Trial and error were the main source or finding successful remedies, as little was known about the chemistry of why certain treatments worked. For instance, it was known that drinking coffee could help cure headaches, but the existence and properties of caffeine itself was still a mystery.